and welcome to Santa Rosa Island, um, a vital part of our channel island, the namesake of our university, um, right off the coast of California, as we all know. Uh, this video will be about invasive plant species on the island, what makes them invasive, and some management concerns that come with them. Um, so grasslands and chaparral are the most predominant ecosystems on Santa Rosa Island. They harbor a diverse range of plant species here. Um, and look here right away, pretty much as soon as you set foot on the island, you start seeing some of these problem um, plants or problem grasses. Uh, these grasslands, but... Um, they play a crucial role in supporting the island's diverse wildlife, including the Santa Cruz Island gopher snake, the spotted skunk, and of course the island fox. Um, this up here is the ranch area, the historical ranch area. <clears throat> You can see that this is pretty much entirely grassland. It looks kind of homogenous here, which is not a good thing. We want more diversity. Um, a lot of these are introduced annual grasses. This includes ripgut brome, soft chest, wild oats, um, a lot that we see on the mainland. They have become the predominant residents, um, out competing the native plants that we would rather be seeing here. Some areas, especially around the old bunkhouse, or not the old bunkhouse, but the bunkhouse, um, have a lot of ice plant. Um, you can see as we start, as we approach the bunkhouse, we have small patches, and then right in front of the bunkhouse, there's a giant wall of ice plant. Um, ice plant is... A special case I think here on the island it's very invasive it spreads um, and it chokes out basically anything else that could be living wherever it lands um, but in this case I think we're keeping it because it also holds everything down pretty well and slows down the erosion um, we don't want this um, this wall to <laughs> to come crumbling down um, going towards Carrington Point, there's, I remember there being a lot of sweet fennel, lots of thistles, uh, not all thistles are native here, some of them are invasive. Um, there's some ivy on the way to Water Canyon, um, some poison oak, I've seen a lot of at Cherry Canyon. Um, I personally haven't seen a lot of the of the historical invasives, um, which is a good thing. Um, but the historical invasives are um, French and Spanish broom, mustard, salt cedar. Um, but they did keep the eucalyptus, eucalyptus trees here on Santa Rosa, um, as well as the eucalyptus and the olive trees on Santa Cruz for historical purposes. Um, and also because eucalyptus, um, the big trees, they act as a nice windbreak. So that's why you see them at the bunkhouse as well as near the staff house. Um, yeah, on Santa Rosa, it's a pretty big established population for sure. And while eucalyptus is classified as invasive, it doesn't look like it's been spreading into areas past the bunkhouse or staff house. So that's a good thing and we hope that stays that way. Invasive species earn their name because of their ability to compete in native vegetation in new environments. Um, they're often competitors or ruderals and they grow super fast. They reproduce like crazy because they have tiny, tiny, tiny seeds that can move, um, move like a, a long distance with not a lot of help. Um, and they're often adaptable to a lot of different conditions. They also establish themselves quickly and form super dense populations, um, like we see the ice plant and these grasses. Um, they often overwhelm the slower growing or specialized native species, and that's what makes them invasive. 
Um, something else that doesn't help our situation is the absence of their natural herbivores, um, plant-eating animals, in the introduced environment. Um, this allows the invasive species to, to reproduce unchecked because there's nothing eating them. They're just going wild. Um, for example, before the island's ranching period, there were deer around to keep the, the grasses in check. And this let the natives grow or gave the natives more opportunity to grow. Um, and thus, the islands had a lot more heterogeneity back then. Invasive plant species, they can also impact water quality negatively because they, um, they affect bank stability and the volume and pollution levels in runoff. I guess that's not too much of a concern on Santa Rosa Island because I'm pretty sure we don't use um, any chemicals or I'm pretty sure we don't do much landscaping at all. Um, but that is something that invasives can do. Uh, some invasives also engage in allelopathy, which is the release of chemicals that inhibit the growth of nearby plants. Um, while others initiate growth earlier in the season capturing essential resources before the native plants can get a chance to get to them and that's one way that they keep the natives down um and just like the combination of all these effects um they create a competitive advantage for these invasive and then they jeopardize the survival and biodiversity of whatever ecosystem they end up in uh, some factors that contribute to the spread of invasives are, um, unfortunately, transportation of visitors to the islands, um, as well as natural processes like wind and sea currents and bird droppings bringing um, invasive seeds in their droppings. Um, and all of these things contribute to the colonization of non-native plants. It's almost unavoidable, um, no matter how well we clean our boots at the bootbrush stations on the mainland. So there are constant efforts to try to keep invasive numbers low. However, removing invasive species comes with um, a set of challenges. Um, some plants like fennel, they can spread their thousands of tiny, tiny seeds easily and they make eradication efforts difficult. Uh, the removal process has to be planned for fennel um, to ensure the problem doesn't escalate further. So um, it's recommended to put a bag over the flower head and tie it tightly before trying to remove it. But even this isn't foolproof because the tiny seeds will like fall through the gaps from the stems in the bag and you end up with more fennel than you removed. <laughs> um, off so they can ad um, address the issue before it spreads. Um, I know Robin on the island asked people to take a picture of a plant they think might be invasive even if they're not sure because the picture would save the GPS location and this would make it easier to find than just saying oh there's some fennel on the trail to Carrington. It saves them a lot of time and a lot of, um, a lot of manpower. Um, restoration efforts also extend beyond removal and involve supporting the native flora to put up a fight against the invasives. Um, this boosts the populations of the native species and enhances the overall resilience of the island's ecosystem. I've actually helped collect um, some native seeds like um, island buckwheat to help cultivate native plants at the M MPS nursery before reintroducing them um, to their orig original environments. And for and Fortunately, solitary native shrubs like lemonade berry and oaks are making a resurgence in areas once dominated by exotic annual grass grasses. Um, <clears throat> you can see in this video, there's a bunch of tiny, tiny shrubs just popping out of the ground in what seems like random places, but um, that's what it looks like when the natives are starting to flourish again, and this is what we want to keep seeing more of. Um, active habitat restoration, coupled with the absence of grazing, um, this is, uh, fosters an environment where the native shrubs can thrive, and this can help transform the landscape back to not its original state, but closer to its natural state than it is now.